Hello and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Christoph Ebermann and I am working at the Joint Secretariat of the Interreg Central Europe Programme. In this session, we will go through the question of how to design a project intervention logic and how to set up and structure a work plan. Let us start with the intervention logic. The intervention logic is defined as the causal links between the territorial challenge or need that will be tackled and the foreseen activities, outputs, as well as desired results, thus the change to be achieved. That's why we're talking here also about the theory of change. At program level, the program intervention logic is defined in the Interreg CE program document. The project intervention logic is to be developed by the applicants and needs to be clearly presented in the project application form. Thereby, the relevance, clarity, and coherence of the project intervention logic are a crucial precondition for project approval and funding. Coming now to the question of how to build the project intervention logic. The starting point is the problem or the issue to be addressed. So the question, which problem is in a certain region, which causes can be identified, and then to think about what is the expected change or what could be the expected solutions for addressing this problem. Then as a next step, one needs to define the um, specific objectives which the project is aiming for and the activities and outputs which are leading to these objectives and um, which are considering uh, the target groups to be involved. And the final step is then the, the results. There's which are the results, which one wants to achieve, and how to sustain them. All this together is this, the intervention logic of a project, and reflects the theory of change, which should be the core narrative of each project. This thinking from the problem to a solution with a clear result orientation. On this visualization, you see on the left-hand side, the project intervention logic, and on the right-hand side, the program intervention logic. There needs to be a very clear linkage uh, and consistency between the project and the program intervention logic. For example, the overall and the project-specific objectives need to clearly contribute to the program-specific objective. The project activities need to be consistent with the supported actions as foreseen in the program uh, document. Same for the project outputs, which need to contribute to the program outputs and the project results, which need to be consistent and contribute to the program results. Let us zoom in now on the outputs. First of all, with the definition of an output. An output is a product that results from the implementation of project activities. In our program, we are differentiating between four different types of outputs. Corporations, strategies and action plans, pilot actions, and solutions. Let us start with the corporations. Corporations between project partners, including associated partners, are considered here within the output type of corporations. They can, in the frame of a project, for example, be further formalized, like in the frame of cooperation, cooperation networks, or uh, they could, the project could lead to the setting up of respective governance structures. Ideally, these corporations, which have been established in the frame of the project, should be continuing beyond the project lifetime. And in order to have this reflected then also in the indicator system, this needs then to be documented in formal cooperation agreements as I will show you a bit later when we come to the part on the indicators. For the next output type, we have these strategies and action plans. A strategy is a targeted way to achieve a goal-oriented process in a specific domain. An action plan translates an existing strategy into actions. What is important here is that strategies and action plans 
need to be jointly developed through transnational exchanges of experiences. This can be done, for example, in a co-design and co-creation process, which can include, among others, also peer review processes. Coming to the next output type, we have the pilot actions. The goal of pilot actions is to test novel approaches, and they should always have an experimental or demonstration character and be limited in their scope. In order to have a maximization of the mutual learning within one partnership, one pilot action should be different from another. Here again, the joint development and joint implementation is a key element. Um, there as well, the pilot action can be designed together, it can be implemented together, where partners are contributing to the reviewing of the pilot actions and making direct improvements to the pilot, which are then um, directly feeding into the implementation phase before then getting into the uh, collecting of lessons learned and applying these results of a pilot, notably in solutions. Solutions are act actually required to be interlinked with pilots and solutions need to derive from pilots. A solution can be, for example, new procedures, can be instruments, services, or tools. Um, ideally, a solution uh, should already set the frame uh, to be deployed and taken up during the project lifetime. Again, here, this development of a solution should be done jointly. Coming now to the indicators. with the main question on how to measure actually the achievements uh, of a project. And this is then done through the set of indicators. Um, as we were just seeing in the previous slides, um, we have these four different output types. Um, for each output type, there is a corresponding output indicator. For example, strategies and action plans have the related output indicator, which needs to be selected, strategies and action plans jointly developed. In the same uh, logic, there is then also a related result indicator, as also shown in this visualization. Um, in this case, if we stay with the same example, it is the joint strategies and action plans taken up by organizations. This, this logical correspondence is to be followed. Um, I would like to highlight one element which is a bit different, um, which are the pilot actions. As you can see, the pilot actions uh, in, in terms of output lead to the output indicator of pilot actions developed and jointly implemented. Um, however, as I was explaining before, the solutions should derive from the pilot actions. Therefore, there is no direct result indicator related to the pilot action. However, the pilot action is feeding into the jointly developed solution, which is again an output and an output indicator, which is then to be covered by the result indicator of solutions taken up or upscaled by organizations. These Output indicators and related result indicators for these four main outputs are the same for all program-specific objectives. And they can apply it in all program-specific objectives. There is just one difference, which is which you can see here at the bottom, which is project supporting cooperation across borders to develop urban and rural linkages. This is an output indicator. Um, which exists in order to reflect uh, the territorial character of uh, a project. And this one is only to, to be applied in the SO 2.5 and the SO 3.1. I can, and I would like to encourage you to have uh, a look at the indicator definitions in the annex of the program manual. This is actually a very important document in which um, for each indicator, further definitions are, pro are provided. There is also an explanation of what is the time for the measurement of these indicators um, and how this should be done. 
So this is really an important document to be pleased looked at. Points of attention I would like to raise for the output indicators is that the indicator on organizations cooperating across borders is an indicator which is to be which is mandatory for all projects. It relates to the output of corporations as uh, shown in the previous slide. Then as a next point, um, as I, which I have already mentioned is that the project supporting cooperation across borders to develop urban rural linkages is an indicator which is only to be used for projects in SO 2.5 and SO 3.1. It can only be selected within these SOs, and it is actually mandatory for all projects in these two SOs. And then as a last point to highlight is the element of jointly. This jointly, which you can see in the indicators, um, refers actually to the involvement of organizations from at least two participating countries. This means that in order to count an output in the output indicators, um, which were shown on the previous slide and which are further defined in the, this Annex 6, it needs for this joint development or for the pilot actions, joint development and implementation, the participation and involvement of organization from at least two participating countries. This for all these three indicators, which are strategies and action plans, pilot actions and solutions. For the result indicators, um, it is important to mention that these result indicators actually measure the direct effects of the project. They should all have a baseline set at zero in um, the application form. The measurement, the measurement time would be uh, UPON project finalization, or at the time of submission of the last periodic progress report, this means three months after the project ends. The indicator organizations cooperating across borders after project completion um, reflects the continued cooperation um, of the partnership and possibly the associated partners, if there are some in the project, which is then uh, continued after the end of the project. And this needs to be formalized and documented. Um, this can the documentation can be, for example. Uh, in the frame of letters of intent of the respective organizations. Since this indicator relates to an output indicator, uh, which is mandatory to all projects, it is highly recommended to also consider this indicator um, by all projects in the terms of result indicator. For the indicators on the uptake of strategies and action plans and solutions, this needs to be as well documented. This, uh, this can be, for example, that be done by decisions of local and regional council uh, or letters of commitment or again, letters of intent or memorandum of understanding for taking up the strategies and action plans or solutions developed in the frame of the project. What is important, um, for, the, for all result indicators is that the targets in the application form and the reported values in the forthcoming reports should be always equal or less to the values of the corresponding output indicators. Let us come now to the work plan. We have heard now what is the intervention logic about and how we can measure the effects through the indicator system. Now, the question is, how can the work plan be structured in order to reflect the overall project intervention logic? Let me give you some key principles of a work plan. A work plan should clearly show how project objectives and results will be achieved. A good work plan should be mature and reflect a concrete plan for developing and implementing foreseen outputs. Thereby, the work plan should focus on main implementation steps and avoid to be too fragmented. The description should thereby focus on the foreseen activities and limit the number of single deliverables. 
for each of these activities. And here, let me point out that contrary to the former Interreg Central Europe program, there is now in the project application form sufficient space in order to describe the activities which are actually foreseen by the project. Then in terms of overall structure, the work plan is structured into a set of thematic work packages where we are recommending to limit it to a total of three, but this total can be increased to a maximum of five if justified content-wise and by the complexity by the project, for example. Please note, there is no separate work package for project management and communication. Project management is to be described in another part of the application form and communication um, should be an integral part of the thematic work packages. For this, I would uh, advise you to uh, listen to my colleagues in the tutorial on communication where further details are provided on the integration of communication into the project application form. At the level of each work package, it is necessary to define a project-specific objective, the related communication objectives, including the related target audiences, the activities necessary for achieving these objectives. There, we would recommend a maximum of four to six activities per work package. Um, but of course, it can be more if, again, needed by the complexity of the project. Same applies for the deliverables, where we have um, where there should be at least one deliverable per activity. And we are recommending to having, of having not more than three deliverables in order not to be too fragmented. However, if it is necessary and justified um, by, for example, the long duration and the complexity of the activity, then uh, of course it can also be more than three if needed. Investments can also be described um, and should be described in each of uh, the work packages and for each work package, also the outputs and including the related output indicators need to be specified. Just going into the key terminology, the project specific objective is the immediate goal that the project can realistically achieve within the project lifetime through its planned activities and related outputs and deliverables. The activities are thereby the main implementation steps that contribute to the development of project outputs and or their subsequent rollout or upscaling. The deliverable is a documentation that describes the implementation of project activities. It should present in an aggregated form the outcomes of, an inter of the intermediate, intermediate steps, like the important parts of a certain activity. It should be thereby be sufficiently comprehensive and not focus only on a single items like a single meeting or a single event or a single training. No, it should be something more comprehensive, bringing together and reflecting the main outcomes of the related activity. Also working papers, uh, which are just uh, uh, reflecting the work in progress should not be uh, provided as a deliverable, rather um, finalized products uh, and uh, should be included as deliverables. In case of complex activities, as I was mentioning before, or stretching over a long period of time, more than one deliverable should actually be foreseen in order to, to have a good coverage of the related activity. If we now zoom, on, zoom in on the investments, please note that there is a series of uh, requirements for investments, uh, which are also further specified in the program manual. Uh, let me just highlight a few points. Investments need to be linked to a pilot action. There's actually the necessity for having actually an investment um, should be demonstrated that it is necessary for the successful implementation of a pilot action. Therefore, an investment as such 
cannot be a pilot action. The investment is actually only the starting point of a pilot action. Um, since, as you know, um, the interreg programs as such are not investment programs. Uh, and therefore, the investments need always to be linked to a pilot action. Um, there need to be a very clear contribution to the project overall and specific objectives. Um, pilot investments need to have a demonstration model or pilot character with a clear transnational dimension, which, by the way, since we were saying before, um, a pilot action needs to be jointly developed and implemented. This, of course, applies then also for the investment where this transnational dimension becomes very clear if you have a co-design and a process, for example, for the investment. And if, for example, you go into a peer review and joint learning uh, from the pilot action and its results. Ideally, the pilot investment should pave the way to larger scale investments, like to, uh, to trigger follow-up investments. Um, the necessary authorizations for pilot, act, uh, pilot investments should be already available or be obtainable in a reasonable time because project time is, of course, limited. Uh, the compliance with relevant legislation and environmental policies is to be ensured and invest infrastructure investments with an expected lifespan of at least five years have to ensure the climate proofing. Compliance with the durability and ownership requirements are to be ensured. And in terms of horizontal principles, the integration, for example, of barrier-free accessibility principles at all levels is highly encouraged by the program. If we stay with these investments, as I was mentioning before, we are talking about uh, investments for elements which are belonging to the cost category five equipment and six infrastructure and works. If investments have total costs above 25,000 euros, the investment description is required in the application form, uh, which includes a specification uh, of the investment as such. And in the concerned partner budget, a specification is also inclu uh, included and necessary, which includes actually also an attribution to the respective investment number. This means that um, you need to first, uh, in your work plan, describe your investment. And then if you go to the partner budget, you will be able in a drop down menu to select the respective investment in order to make this attribution. For investments equal or below 25,000 total costs, it is uh, sufficient to be briefly described under the rela related activity in the work plan, and they need to be specified in the concerned partner budget. Let me just briefly touch upon productive investments, which are one category of the investments, um, but which include specific and very important features. Productive investments are defined as investment in fixed capital or immaterial assets of enterprises with a view to producing goods and services and thereby contributing to gross capital formation and employment. Please note that productive investments can only be supported for SMEs with notable exceptions for enterprises other than SMEs as foreseen in the Article 5 of the ERDF regulation, e.g. if involving corporations with SMEs or when made in small mid-cap companies in research and innovation activities under the SO 1.1 or supporting primary, primarily energy efficiency and renewable energy under SO 2.1. Please see here a visualization of how um, the entire intervention logic um, of a project could look like and how this work plan structure is integrated into this overall project intervention logic. There's, as you can see here um, at the top, you have uh, the uh, project overall objective, which is then 
uh, achieved through the different work packages. Each work package, as I was mentioning before, needs a project-specific objective. Um, please note that the project-specific objective needs to be different between each work package. So it's one cannot replicate just the project-specific objective between work packages. This needs to be different from work package to work package. Then you need to define the communication objectives and then define the, the activities leading to or allowing to achieve the project specific objective of this work package. Um, here we have illustrated this. You can see some activities have one deliverable, some require maybe two deliverables. Uh, very complex and lasting long activities might uh, require three deliverables. So you can see this, this can be uh, different and uh, depends on actually what is foreseen within the activities. Um, if there is an investment, uh, this needs also be described like in this example, work package two has an investment. All this uh, leads to uh, the achievement and uh, of the uh, project outputs per work package and everything together should lead to the project results this the change to be achieved. For further information, please see here our contact details of the Joint Secretariat, as well as uh, the link to our program website, where also all program documents and information about the respective call are being published. With this, we are coming to an end of this tutorial. We hope that all your questions on the project intervention logic and on how to structure a work plan have been clarified. Please note that further information is also available in the program manual and in the offline template of the application form. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate of getting back to us. Uh, there will be, for example, a Q&A session uh, in which you, you can directly ask your questions or for example, during the individual consultations, which you can schedule for your project idea. I would like to thank you for your attention and I wish you a lot of success with the preparation of your project proposal. Mm -hmm.